Have you ever wondered why Jesus' words, told more than 2,000 years ago, continue to impact lives in such profound ways? And even more intriguing, why did he choose to speak in parables, using simple stories to reveal such powerful secrets? You may not know it, but these parables hide secrets that can completely transform your life. Secrets that are not in plain sight, but that, when understood, can bring light in the midst of the darkness of everyday doubts and challenges. Imagine discovering revelations that few can see, diving into teachings that go beyond words, unveiling what really matters in this life and the next. Jesus' parables are like precious jewels hidden in the pages of the Bible, loaded with deep and eternal meanings. These short and seemingly simple stories told by Jesus serve as windows into the kingdom of God. They are not mere fables, but spiritual lessons that speak directly to the human heart. Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus using parables to convey teachings about faith, morality, and divine purpose. Matthew 13, 10, 13. Each parable is a key that opens doors to spiritual truths, but which are only understood by those who seek to understand with sincerity. Why did Jesus choose to use parables instead of direct speeches? The answer lies in the transforming power that parables have to reach both the mind and the spirit. They are teaching tools that capture attention, challenge the listener, and reveal truths in ways that logical speech alone could not. Matthew 13, 34, 35. Jesus knew that the message of the kingdom of God could not be imposed, but rather offered, inviting each person to reflect and decide for himself. Parables are an invitation to discernment, a way of separating those who listen superficially from those who truly seek divine wisdom. These narratives were also accessible to everyone, regardless of their level of education or social status. Through parables, Jesus was able to communicate complex truths in a simple and engaging way. Imagine yourself listening to these stories at the foot of a mountain with a crowd of people, Every word of Jesus, while subtle, was a call to action, a gentle provocation for his listeners to re-evaluate their lives in light of the principles of the kingdom of heaven, Mark 4, 33, 34. Thus, Jesus' parables remain a powerful teaching tool, challenging us to live according to the Bible verses and to apply those teachings in our daily lives. The parable of the sower is one of Jesus' most well-known parables, found in Matthew 13, 1, 23, and it powerfully illustrates how God's word is received by different types of human hearts. In the story, the sower sows seeds, which represent the word, in four types of soil, by the wayside, in stony soil, among thorns, and in good soil. Each type of soil symbolizes a distinct response to God's message. The seeds by the wayside are quickly snatched away by the evil one, while those that fall on stony soil sprout quickly but wither from lack of depth. Seeds among thorns are choked by the cares of life, and only those that fall on good soil bear abundant fruit. Spiritually, this parable reveals the many ways in which the human heart can respond when it hears God's word. The hard ground represents those who hear but don't understand the message, allowing the enemy to steal it immediately. The stony soil symbolizes those who receive the word with joy, but do not have deep roots and in the face of difficulties quickly go astray. The thorny soil reflects hearts burdened by worldly worries, riches and pleasures, which end up stifling spiritual growth. Good soil, on the other hand, is the receptive and fertile heart, where the Word of God takes deep root, resulting in a transformed and fruitful life. For reflection, this parable challenges us to examine our own hearts and our receptivity to God's Word. Have we allowed the worries of life to stifle our faith? Or perhaps we are like the stony ground with shallow enthusiasm but no lasting commitment. Jesus invites us to become good soil, to cultivate a heart that not only hears the Word, but understands it and lives it daily, allowing it to bear spiritual fruit in abundance. Matthew 13, 23. This requires intentionality and a deep desire to follow the teachings of the Bible verses, transforming our lives in the light of the gospel. The parable of the Good Samaritan, found in Luke 10, 25, 37, 
is one of Jesus's most impactful narratives, challenging our prejudices and inviting us to genuine compassion. The story begins with a man who is attacked by thieves and left almost dead by the wayside. A priest and a Levite, representatives of the religiosity of the time, pass by him, but both choose to ignore his condition. It is a Samaritan, considered an enemy by the Jews, who stops, tends to the man's wounds and takes him to an inn, paying all the expenses necessary for his recovery. This historical and social context makes the Samaritan's action all the more surprising. At that time, the Jews and the Samaritans had a relationship marked by mutual contempt and prejudice. Jesus uses this cultural tension to show that love of neighbor transcends ethnic, religious, and social barriers. The parable teaches us that true compassion is not just feeling sorry, but acting for the well-being of others, even those who are not part of our immediate circle. The Samaritan thus becomes a living example of what it means to love one's neighbor as oneself, a central commandment in Scripture. Reflecting on this parable, we are challenged to examine our own willingness to help others. How many times have we failed to act, rationalizing that it is not our responsibility? Jesus calls us to be like the Good Samaritan, to overcome our prejudices and show mercy to everyone, regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances. Luke 10, 36, 37. The practical application of this teaching can be seen in simple gestures, such as offering help to a neighbor in need, or participating in community actions aimed at alleviating the suffering of the most vulnerable. Bible verses remind us that our faith should be expressed in actions of genuine, unconditional love. The parable of the prodigal son, recorded in Luke 15, 11, 32, is one of the most moving and profound narratives of Jesus, portraying God's mercy and unconditional love. In the story, a young man decides to ask his father for his share of the inheritance and wastes it in a life of excess and futility. After falling into disgrace and hunger, he is forced to work feeding pigs, a humiliating job, especially for a Jew. It is in this moment of despair that he repents and decides to return home, hoping only to be treated like a servant. When the young man returns, the father, who symbolizes God, sees him from afar and runs to hug him, even before the son can apologize. He not only forgives him, but also restores him to his original position as a son, celebrating his return with a great feast. This part of the parable powerfully illustrates God's love for repentant sinners, showing that he is always ready to forgive us and welcome us back into his arms, regardless of how far we have strayed. This divine grace is something that goes beyond human comprehension, revealing the depth of love described in the biblical verses. On the other hand, the older brother, who has always been obedient, feels jealous and angry at the warm welcome that the father gives to the prodigal son. He represents those who, despite being in the father's house, do not fully understand God's grace and mercy. This character makes us reflect on our own hearts. Do we sometimes see ourselves as the older brother, judging others and forgetting that we also need God's grace? Jesus challenges us to embrace the joy of the Father and to share love and mercy with all, celebrating restoration and repentance as indicated in the biblical verses that guide us. The parable of the talents found in Matthew 25, 14, 30, presents a powerful lesson about responsibility and faithfulness to the gifts and opportunities God gives us. In the story, a man, while traveling to a distant country, entrusts his possessions to three servants, giving each one an amount of talents, which were coins of great value at the time. The first servant receives five talents, the second receives two, and the third receives one. The first two invest their talents and double the amount received, while the third, fearing failure, buries their talent and does not make it yield. When the master returns, he commends the first two servants for their diligence and rewards them with more responsibility and joy. However, the third servant, who hid the talent, is reprimanded and his talent is given to the one who had ten. The message of this parable is clear. God gives us gifts and opportunities not to be kept, but to be used for the sake of his kingdom. If we act out of fear or neglect, we fail to fulfill our purpose and miss out on the chance to experience the fullness of life that God desires for us, as revealed in the Bible verses. 
This parable invites us to reflect on how we are using the talents God has entrusted to us. Are we investing our gifts to serve others and glorify God? Or are we burying our opportunities out of fear or laziness? Jesus teaches us that being faithful in the little things prepares us to receive greater responsibilities in the kingdom of God. This can be applied in a practical way in our lives, always looking for ways to develop and apply our gifts for the benefit of others and the community, in line with the teachings of the biblical verses. The parable of the wheat and the tires, narrated in Matthew 13, 24, 30, offers a profound insight into the coexistence of good and evil in the world. In the story, a farmer sows good seed in his field, but while men sleep, his enemy comes and sows tares in the midst of the wheat. When the plants grow, the tares appear along with the wheat, confusing the farmer's servants. They wonder if they should uproot the tares immediately, but the farmer directs them to let them both grow together until harvest, when the tares will be separated and burned, and the wheat will be gathered into the barn. Spiritually, this parable represents the kingdom of heaven, where good and evil coexist until the day of final judgment. The tares symbolize those who, although they are among God's people, do not truly belong to the kingdom, while the wheat represents the righteous. Jesus teaches us that it is not up to us to judge and uproot the tares, but rather to trust in the wisdom and patience of God, who at the right time will separate the righteous from the unrighteous. Matthew 13, 39, 40. This teaching is a call to patience and vigilance, reminding us that God is in control, even when evil seems to thrive. This parable also challenges us to examine our own hearts and to ask, are we wheat or tares? Are we really living according to the principles of God's kingdom as revealed in the Bible verses, or are we just appearing to be? Jesus' message is clear, judgment will come. But until then, our task is to grow in holiness, trust and faithfulness letting God take care of the tares. In our daily lives, this means practicing patience and mercy, knowing that God's timing is perfect and that he is righteous in all his actions. In the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl of great price, described in Matthew 13, 44, 46, Jesus teaches us about the incomparable preciousness of the kingdom of heaven. In the first parable, a man finds a treasure hidden in a field and full of joy sells everything he has to buy that field. In the second, a merchant who seeks fine pearls finds one of great value and equally sells everything to acquire it. Both stories highlight the idea that God's kingdom is something so valuable that it is worth any sacrifice to obtain it. Spiritually, these parables challenge us to reflect on our priorities and what we are willing to sacrifice in our pursuit of the kingdom of heaven. The treasure and pearl represent the truth, salvation, and eternal life that Jesus offers, a value that surpasses any material wealth or worldly success. Jesus calls us to recognize this value and to do whatever it takes to possess it, even if it means renouncing all that the world values. It is a lesson about the need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, as the Bible verses teach us, Matthew 6.33. Applying this lesson to our lives, we must ask ourselves, what are we willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of God? Are we truly seeking God with all our hearts, or are we distracted by the ephemeral treasures of this world? These parables invite us to reevaluate our lives and make decisions that reflect our desire to reach true spiritual treasure. This may mean investing more time in prayer, reading Bible verses, and glorifying actions to God, knowing that any sacrifice made for the sake of the kingdom will be abundantly rewarded. The parable of the unjust judge and the persistent widow, found in Luke 18, 1-8, is a powerful lesson in the importance of persistence in prayer and unwavering faith. In the story, Jesus tells of a widow who, facing a situation of injustice, continues to ask for help from a judge who does not fear God or respect men. Despite the judge's initial indifference, the widow does not give up and, finally, his persistence tires him to the point that he decides to attend to her just to get rid of her. Jesus uses this parable to teach that if even an unjust judge can be moved by persistence, how much more will God, who is just and loving, 
answer the prayers of those who cry out to him day and night. This parable challenges us to reflect on our own prayer life. Often when we face difficulties, we may be tempted to give up, feeling that God is not listening to us. However, Jesus encourages us to be like the persistent widow, maintaining our faith and confidence unwavering, even when circumstances seem otherwise. Bible verses remind us that God is faithful and just, and that he will respond at the right time according to his perfect will, Luke 18, 7, 8. Persistence in prayer is not only about getting answers, but also about strengthening our relationship with God. By applying this parable to our lives, we are invited to persevere in our prayers, knowing that God hears each prayer. If you're praying for a change in your life, for healing or for a specific need, don't give up. Keep seeking, knocking and asking, trusting that God in his wisdom will respond according to his perfect plan. This perseverance is a reflection of our faith, as the Bible verses teach us, and it keeps us connected to God's transforming power, even in the most difficult situations. The parable of the barren fig tree, told by Jesus in Luke 13, 6 and 9, carries an urgent message about repentance and God's patience. In the story, a man plants a fig tree in his vineyard, and for three consecutive years, finds no fruit on it. Frustrated, he orders the wine grower to cut it, as he is only occupying the soil uselessly. However, the wine grower asks for another year to take care of the fig tree, digging around it and fertilizing it in the hope that it will bear fruit. If it is still sterile, then it can be cut off. Spiritually, the fig tree represents God's people and more broadly, all of us. God, the owner of the vineyard, expects our lives to bear spiritual fruit, acts of love, justice, and obedience, as revealed in the Bible verses, Galatians 5, 23 However, the lack of fruit can symbolize a life disconnected from God without repentance or true change. The patience of the wine grower reflects God's mercy, which gives us time to repent and change our ways. However, this patience is not infinite, and the parable alerts us to the urgency of bearing fruit while there is still time. This parable challenges us to seriously consider our own spiritual lives. Are we producing the fruits that God expects of us, or are we living in a sterile, purposeless way? Jesus invites us to do honest self-examination and take concrete steps to cultivate a fruitful life through reading Bible verses, prayer, and deeds of faith. The time we have is an opportunity to turn to God and allow Him to transform our hearts so that we can live in ways that glorify His name and fulfill His purpose in us. Jesus' parables are not just ancient stories, but living lessons that span the centuries, speaking directly to our time. They invite us to apply Jesus' teachings in practical ways in our everyday lives. Each parable is like a mirror that reflects not only the challenges we face, but also the divine solutions to living them according to the principles of the kingdom of God. Through these stories, we are called to reevaluate our priorities, our attitudes, and our relationship with God and our neighbor, always in the light of the biblical verses. Applying these parables in everyday life means living with purpose and intentionality, always seeking the kingdom of God above all else. This can manifest itself in simple ways, such as showing compassion to our neighbors, being faithful in the use of the talents God has given us, or persisting in prayer even in the face of adversity. The parables challenge us to act, to not just be listeners, but doers of the word, allowing Jesus' teachings to transform every aspect of our lives. After all, Jesus' call is to a life of active faith, where the principles of the kingdom are lived in a practical and visible way. These lessons are as relevant today as they were in Jesus' time. Modern society, with its distractions and challenges, desperately needs the values of the kingdom of God, and parables offer a clear path to incorporate them into our daily journey. By reflecting on these stories, we are led to an inner transformation, which propels us to live according to God's will, as revealed in the Bible verses. True wisdom lies in applying these eternal truths, allowing the light of Christ to shine through our actions, inspiring others to do the same. Throughout this journey through the hidden secrets of Jesus' parables, you have been challenged to see beyond the superficial, to reflect deeply, and to turn that understanding into concrete actions. 
But the real question is, what will you do with this knowledge? Parables are not just stories to be heard, but invitations for real and lasting life change. Are you willing to apply these teachings in your daily life? To seek the kingdom of God above all else, to cultivate an active faith, and to allow God's love and justice to guide your every decision? Now is the time to act. Ask yourself, am I living according to the principles Jesus taught us? Am I doing all I can to be the good soil that produces abundant fruit? If not, what's stopping me? This is the call for you to commit to a transformed life, where every step you take is aligned with the Bible verses and God's will. Don't let this opportunity pass you by without you making a decision. Subscribe to the channel, activate notifications, and continue this journey of learning and transformation. Let's go together, explore God's word more deeply, and live according to the teachings that have the power to change everything.